Hello, I'm going to talk about what a programming paradigm is in this video and go through or give an overview at least of some of our main ones. So a paradigm is a set of related concepts and in the context of programming, there are different approaches to programming. So they are often distinct. You can think of them almost as different programming styles, but they make use of different concepts in the language. Now each paradigm has got its own pros and cons, but ultimately the end result should be very similar. They should be able to solve the same problems. They just go about it in different ways. And so a lot of it is down to personal choice. A lot of it, if you get a job as a software developer, is down to the personal choice of your boss, right? You've just got to follow the company line. But people can get quite opinionated about what paradigm's best. Ideally, you've got experience of programming in several, so you've, you've got that context. Which is made easier because many, not all, but many programming languages are said to be multi-paradigm, meaning they support the different approaches. So they might contain constructs which allow you to use multiple paradigms. So for example, a language like Python, you could completely ignore object-oriented programming and just focus on procedural, but equally it's got object-oriented constructs and so you can make use of those as well. Having said this, definitely some languages lean towards a particular paradigm if the creator of that language or creators of that language were a particular fan of a particular approach, they're gonna adapt their language to fit that approach. So for instance, Haskell is fairly well known as a functional programming language. Java is fairly well known as an object-oriented programming language. Those are two paradigms, functional and object-oriented. But it's not always that clear. Okay, so not every language you could describe as having one paradigm. Even still, a paradigm is often quite loosely defined and it's just a rough approach, a rough set of constructs, which over time has got labeled under a particular term. You've got to bear in mind, programming as a, a field developed very fast from the 1950s onwards. And so things weren't always tightly defined, which means 70 years later, we've got to sort of try and define stuff ourselves. So let me attempt to do that with some of our big paradigms. Now there are two high level approaches, as I would personally think of it. We've got imperative languages and we've got declarative languages. And the difference in approaches, imperative languages have this explicit set of commands. So your program has got commands that specify how to solve your particular problem. You've worked at an algorithm, you've put it into code, it tells you how to solve this problem. So when you follow it, hopefully the problem gets solved. Whereas the approach of declarative languages is not so much telling it how to do it, but instead telling it what needs to be done. So you are expressing in your code what the program should solve. So what should the endpoint be? And you sort of let the compiler or the engine behind the scenes figure out how to get to that point. So imperative, you are telling it what to do. Declarative, you're telling it where you want to end up with and sort of letting it work on it behind the scenes. Of course, you've got to actually define it very carefully in that point. Now, it's not a programming language, but it might give you some context as to what declarative means because quite likely a lot of you watching this will have used a declarative language, even if you didn't necessarily think of it, because SQL for interacting with databases is declarative. So for example, this tiny bit of SQL code, again, it's not a programming language, but a bit of code, select name and address from employees. You're telling it what you want. You want the name and address column in the employees table, but you're not telling it how to get it. You're just saying what you want in the end. And the database system will figure out how to get this for you you're not, really, you're not really worried about how exactly it's doing it. Now within imperative, we've got a few other paradigms as are generally defined. And the big one inside declarative for actual programming is the functional paradigm. So structure programming is often considered part of procedural, but for now, let me just separate it because they are a tiny bit different. Structure programming is really trying to be ultra clear, ultra organized in your code. So you're programming to subroutine interfaces, you're trying to abstract as much as possible and use parameters, use return values. And within your code, you've got clear control flow. So using sequence selection iteration where you can so that the logic inside your program is really, really clear. Now, this is often part of procedural because really you're using subroutines. And the procedural paradigm is all about using these subroutines to carry out specific tasks on data. So you've got many subroutines, which are blocks of code which perform one job. Now you could produce some structured code without using any subroutines. 
But in reality, if you're doing procedural programming, you should be aiming to do structured programming as well. Object-oriented programming has its own constructs. We've got objects and classes. And one of these constructs, objects, are trying to encapsulate both behavior and data. So whereas procedural, we've got data being worked on by subroutines, but they're kind of separate. In object-oriented, we've got the behavior, which are also subroutines, and we've got the data packaged in one unit called an object. This has its own benefits, has its own drawbacks too, but certain benefits which we'll cover in a future video. But essentially, we're using subroutines just in a different way, and we've got more complicated constructs like inheritance and ideas like polymorphism, which are quite different to procedural paradigms. So I'd say those two are the, are the key different ones which are used nowadays. Functional is used quite a lot in data science, actually. Now, functional programming also uses subroutines. You can see over time, subroutines have become used very often because they're so useful. But this time, we're trying to avoid a lot of the control structures used in imperative languages. We are just trying to express a problem in a really mathematical way, so that it's just a series of functions and function calls. So you can think of it as being very recursive. It likes recursion, it will use recursion over something like iteration, because recursion is really telling you the endpoint, whereas iteration is really telling you how to get there. And so declarative languages prefer to specify what the endpoint should be, not so much how you get there. So you define these functions, you figure out how they interact, and then let it evaluate to hopefully give you your final answer. Now this slide is just an overview, it might raise more questions than it does answers. But these are all paradigms, all different approaches, all have slightly different constructs they make use of, but ultimately they are quite similar because over you know, 70 odd years, people's approaches tend to merge together. The two big different ones today are procedural and object oriented. Functional is very different as well, but is a little bit more niche and a bit less commonly used.